Conservative lawmakers in the Polish parliament exulted at Donald Trump's victory, standing and applauding while they chanted his name. The prospect of a second Trump term has excited people on the populist right across Central Europe who share his anti-immigrant views and contempt for international organizations. But many others in a region near the war in Ukraine are afraid. They worry Trump could abandon Ukraine and force Kyiv into a deal that ends up emboldening Russia further, or unwind the US military presence in Europe. The change in Washington means Europe will have to invest more in its security and defense rather than relying on the American protective shield as it has done for decades, argues Michael Baranowski, managing director of Warsaw-based GMF East, part of the German Marshall Fund think tank. We Europeans Poles and French and Brits and preferably Germany as well need to step up, Baranowski said. Only by stepping up do we have a chance to keep the worst-case scenarios from happening. Both a bad deal in Ukraine and perhaps a lowering of U.S. engagement in Europe. Poland, the Baltic states and other nations across Central and Eastern Europe were under Moscow's control during the Cold War. When that era ended in 1989, it freed them to turn to the West. They never want to return to being satellites of Moscow. NATO members now, they worry that Trump in his second term could end a decades-long commitment to securing the peace in Europe. Just this week, a missile defense base in northern Poland was inaugurated, the fruit of years of planning by Republican and Democratic administrations. Polish officials expressed hopes that it was a sign that a bipartisan U.S. commitment to the region would endure. The whole world will see clearly that this is not Russia's sphere of interest anymore, Polish President Andrzej Duda declared. Trump has a long history of denigrating NATO, and former administration officials say he repeatedly threatened to withdraw the U.S. from the alliance. His allies have described that as bluster or tough negotiating tactics that have pushed other European allies to take more responsibility, and argue that Trump didn't abandon NATO. The change in Washington has in just a few days changed the dynamic of Poland's presidential campaign before an election next spring. Foreign Minister Radek Sikorski, a former defense minister with ties in Washington, entered the running to be the candidate for centrist Prime Minister Donald Tusk's party, challenging the longtime favorite, Warsaw Mayor Rafał Trzaskowski. Sikorski argues that his experience makes him the better choice for the times. His opponents argue that the anti-Trump views of his wife, the American writer and Applebaum, could create complications with Trump's upcoming administration. The region is now holding its collective breath to see what a second Trump presidency will bring. North Korea tested exploding drones designed to crash into targets and leader Kim Jong-un called for accelerating mass production of the weapons, state media said Friday. The country's latest military demonstration came as the United States, South Korea, and Japan engaged in combined military exercises involving advanced fighter jets and a U.S. aircraft carrier in nearby international waters, in a display of their defense posture against North Korea. North Korea's official Korean Central News Agency published photos of Kim talking with officials near at least two different types of unmanned aerial vehicles. They included those with X-shaped tails and wings that look similar to the ones the country disclosed in August, when Kim inspected another demonstration of drones that explode on impact. The drones flew various routes and accurately struck targets, KCNA said. Its images showed what appeared to be a BMW sedan being destroyed and old models of tanks being blown up. Kim expressed satisfaction with the weapons development process and stressed the need to build a serial production system as early as possible and go into full-scale mass production, noting how drones are becoming crucial in modern warfare. KCNA paraphrased Kim as saying drones were easy to make at low cost for a range of military activities. The report didn't say if Kim spoke directly about rival South Korea, which the North Korean drones are apparently designed to target. North Korea last month accused South Korea of sending its own drones to drop anti-North Korean propaganda leaflets over the North's capital of Pyongyang, 
and threaten to respond with force if such flights occur again. South Korea's military has refused to confirm whether or not the North's claims were true. Tensions in the region have escalated as Kim flaunts his advancing nuclear and missile program, which includes various nuclear-capable weapons targeting South Korea and intercontinental ballistic missiles. Kim is also allegedly sending military equipment and troops to Russia to support President Vladimir Putin's war on Ukraine, which raised concerns in Seoul that he would get Russian technology in return to further develop his arsenal. In addition to his intensifying nuclear threats, Kim has also engaged in psychological and electronic warfare against South Korea, such as flying thousands of balloons to drop trash in the south and disrupting GPS signals from border areas near the south's biggest airport. South Korean officials say North Korea will be a key topic in a trilateral summit between South Korean President Yoon suk yeol U.S. President Joe Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba this week at the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Meetings in Peru. South Korean Foreign Minister Cho tae yeol and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met on the margins of the APEC on Thursday and discussed strong concerns over deepening ties between Pyongyang and Moscow.